Hey folks, this is Kalani. Another Shadowlands alpha build went live this week, and while it didn't give us a new zone to look at, or any insight into some of the larger features like Covenants and Sanctums, we did get to data mine the rest of the raid set for the Castle Nathria raid. This is the big castle in the middle of the Revendreth zone, and it's our very first raid in the Shadowlands expansion. Because Revendreth is all about gothic scenery, vampires, castles, gargoyles, and blood anima, you can be sure we'll see lots of those themes throughout the raid, and throughout the raid gear. We finally have a full roster of armor sets to preview, including an amazing Plague Doctor inspired cloth set and a Vampire Hunter leather set. Before we get started, if you weren't yet aware, we do stream over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. If you want to see the face behind the videos on this channel, swing by and say hi sometime. Let's kick things off with the cloth set, and oh my, what a cloth set we have this time. They definitely want to keep things on the darker side of history in this first patch, don't they? We have the vampires, the gargoyles, the gothic architecture, and now we have the plague doctors to go along with it. That is definitely a very striking image, and it's quite a fit for a cloth set really when you think about it. The plague doctors were caretakers of the sick, particularly of those suffering from the plague. They were more or less specialized Doctors of the time, which means this set will fit the priests rather well if you ask me. The mages and warlocks don't line up quite as nicely, though I think many warlocks definitely won't complain that they get another dark themed set to play around with. There are six colours in total, so I'll rotate through them as we go. Different colours give off very different vibes with this set, mainly because of the vials and potions that adhere the set. The shoulder pads are two massive containers of something very potent, I would assume. If you look closely, you could even see the bubble that it gives off. It doesn't look fully stoppered though, and some coloured vapour is seeping out of the top, but I'm sure that's perfectly safe. There's also syringes on the leg guards and what looks like another set of potions or vials on the belt. There are some pouches, no doubt filled with all manner of herbs and spices, attached to the belt and on the legs as well. As the colours change for the set, you go from what could have been healing potions to potentially something else, like mana potions or poison vials, mustard gas. I think the set as a whole looks fantastic. The idea and theme has been executed very well, and you immediately see what they were going for. The headpiece is a cross between the famous Plague Doctor mask and a gas mask. Those little circles added onto the sides give the unmistakable look of any old gas mask, and the sharp beak and covered head complete the Plague Doctor look. Now, if I was to nitpick at anything relating to the headpiece, it would be the beak not standing up quite as stiff as you might expect. You can see in the side-on preview, it goes down more than it goes straight out. I guess they didn't want the beak to protrude all too much, but I think it would have looked better with a more defined straight beak. The little knickknacks scattered through the set are a great addition, and really the only thing that might not quite fit as well as everything else is the gloves. The large plate spikes on the gloves are a bit out of place, and make the gloves quite a bit chunkier than maybe what they need to be, but it's not super offensive. The glow on the gloves has a nice touch and gives you a bit more reason to keep them around. Don't worry too much about the long robe look either. If you'd rather get rid of the long robe and just wear pants instead, that is going to be an option by the looks of things. I've seen a lot of sets give both pants and skirt options in Shadowlands, so maybe that's something they will always try to do where they can from this point onward. More choice is always nice. Not every clothy wants to run around in a full robe all day, you know? With this set matching the darker themes of Revendreth very well, it makes me excited to see where our next raid is going to take place and what kinds of sets we'll see in the future. I know the dev team has said that they want to get back to class sets instead of raid environment sets, but I think this time they actually did a great job. Now let's move on to the leather set next, which I think is going to be a hate it or love it set. You can probably see what I mean right away. It's cool, it's different, there are some really interesting effects going on, and there are a lot of possibilities with this set. But it's also kind of goofy, a bit comical, and honestly kind of bland at the same time. Your eyes probably go straight to the headpiece, right? The overall effect reminds me a lot of Alucard. Big hat, glowing red eyes. Kind of a vampire who hunts other vampires, or at least someone who has 
some unnatural powers using that power for the greater good. The glowing blood red eyes are a really cool touch. I don't think we've ever seen an eye glow quite that big and obvious. The trails that it leaves look amazing and make me really excited for what other effects might lie in store. It's just a shame they come with a rather comical cowboy hat. As I said, I think it's going to be a love or hate relationship with this set. Kind of like Marmite. The overall set looks good. I don't think it's super amazing as a combined piece, but it does still come across as a set. Once again, we have six different recolors, so we'll scroll through them as we talk. Perhaps the most obvious change in this set is the lack of shoulder pads. This could be because they're just missing from data mining, or it could be that this set has been designed to leave shoulders out of the set entirely. I don't think this is a mistake though. I think this right here is the full set. I don't know what kind of shoulders would complement this set. The collar alone takes up quite a bit of real estate that the shoulders would make use of, and the idea of a fancy trench coat is to kind of not have huge hulking shoulder pads. But then you run into another problem. With how bulky the hands are, and the waist, and the boots, the top half does look a little empty without shoulders. I think the large 3D elements on the gloves and boots are really out of place on the set as a whole, and the belt could have been toned down a bit as well. They probably wanted to emphasize the pouches on the belt, but I just think it's too big. There is a dagger almost hidden on your hip and a row of potions on the other side. They're nice touches, but you can barely see them because the gloves are clipping into them too much. Honestly, I think players will take the really cool parts of this set, namely the chest and the head, and mix and match other pieces to try and fit in with them. The legs might fit too, depending on how much of the boot is attached to the legs or the boots, and Wowhead actually created a preview of this set with just the chest piece available. This is why I said the set has a lot of potential. You can keep the head, or get rid of it, that's your choice, but just look at this chest piece. Finally, a trench coat that's available to all leather wearers that you can mix and match with your own transmog set to create your very own fancy suit to run around in. This is going to be great for role players or just for anyone who loves to create transmog sets. Remember that the chest piece will change along with the set colors too, so you don't just have the black chest piece. You have all of the available colours to work with, assuming we're going to get our hands on all six recolours. I think two of them might be for PvP, one for Alliance and one for Horde, so that might be the only restriction on them. The other four should be LFR, Normal Hurug, and Mythic Raid colours. Bear in mind that this set might not be finished yet, we are still in Alpha, subject to change and all that jazz, and even though you might not love the entire set as a whole, you cannot deny that there's some super cool effects at work here, and an amazing amount of potential for key pieces of the this new raid set. Up next is the male set, which in my opinion is always the true test of raid sets. Male wearers will know my plight. If you're playing a hunter or a shaman, you know that male sets aren't always the best. They might look just like leather, or just like plate, or they become a bad mishmash that doesn't look like either and certainly doesn't look like male, but once in a blue moon, the dev team does get a male set right. I think this has the potential to be one of those male sets. Before you start judging about the skirt, so this is yet another set that gives you the option of the robe slash skirt or the pants and tunic. You have some leather effects in the underclothes and on the first layer of the shoulders, and then you have some sort of male sort of plate parts with a hexagon pattern on the chest and a tabard-like extension below the belt. And it's also on the gloves too. I actually like these gloves. They're not too bulky. I think bulky gloves can look out of place really easily, but these ones are a good fit. The set flows well together, even though we seem to be missing a headpiece. I feel like the male sets are always missing something in these previews, but we'll soldier on regardless. The the shoulders look beastly. One side has your trusty backup stakes in case one of those blasted Venthyr gets too close, and the other has a warning to all demons, gargoyles, or vampires that would come near. Two skulls impaled to your very own shoulder, with a couple of spare stakes for good measure that you could probably yank out if you ever really needed to. It's a grand image. Part of me wishes that the shoulders were a bit smaller though, and I do think this will look better on the races and genders which do have smaller shoulder pads in general. I think reducing the size of some other elements could potentially look quite a bit better too. The belt is a bit oversized just looking at it, and the boots stick out a bit as well. 
Those, uh, those toes on the boot make me kind of uneasy. It's like they haven't cut their toenails in a while, or they just really want to boot someone and leave a nasty mark. It kind of reminds me of the Mogu a little bit too, and it, it's just kind of odd. It just feels a bit tacked on. Apart from that, I think they did a great job. Now, sadly, the headpiece could literally make or break the set as a whole, so depending on what that looks like, this could be a great set, or a not-so-amazing set. But I like what we've got so so far. Hopefully the headpiece doesn't ruin it when we finally get to see that added on top. And last but not least, we have the plate set. You've probably seen this one floating around for a while, I think it was the first to get data mined. What a great start to raid sets, and I have to say, some of the other sets haven't disappointed either. I hope we continue with great raid sets throughout Shadowlands, that was definitely a bit of a weak spot for battle for Azeroth early on. Some Uldia sets were not that amazing, but this plate set should make a lot of Death Knights, Paladins, and Warriors out there quite happy. We have various colours as per usual, so I'll scroll through them as we go. This looks like a Grand Crusader to me, a holy warrior bent on vanquishing evil from our lands. The wisps of smoke coming from the shoulders and helm are a fantastic touch, and the set flows really well. The fur-lined jacket for the first layer on the inside also looks really cool and gives me a bit of a Viking vibe. But then you have the full plate helm with a shiny ornament on top. It's kind of like a jousting set, actually, isn't it? And hey, if anyone was ever bothering you, or talking too much while your raid leader is trying to explain strats, just give them a quick nudge with those toes. That will get their attention, and disembowel them, potentially, but that's okay. We have healers for a reason. The cross on the helm and the gloves, kind of like a cross, also lends itself to the crusader look, and there's two large square emblems on the front and back of the shoulder pads too. They match up with your belt buckle and pull the whole set together. I really like that this is most definitely a heavy plate set, but it's not bulky and overbearing. The leather and fur underneath slims everything down and nothing is completely out of place. The gloves aren't too big, the boots aren't too big, the belt buckle is maybe pushing it when it comes to size, but overall, I actually just really love this set. I wonder if I'll play with this set on or the Revendreth plate set on my Paladin. That is going to be a hard choice for sure. This might also end up being a fantastic set to take everything but your chest and pants off and use other pieces for boots, gloves, helms, and shoulders. You basically have a fur trench coat on underneath all that plate. Kind of like the leather gear, not quite as cool though. And that's all four armor types covered. The cloth and plate sets are probably my favorite from the lot. Playing a plate wearer is going to be really hard in this expansion. Most of the Covenant armor looks awesome in plate too. The Maw gear looks amazing. The Raid gear looks fantastic. How do you pick which one to wear at any given time? I can see everyone spending way too much gold on Transmog in the Shadowlands expansion, but that's definitely not a bad thing. More cool sets to choose from will always be good, and that's just another reason why Shadowlands is shaping up to be a great experience so far. Which set is your favorite so far and why? Is there any set here that you think just doesn't look good or doesn't match with the Shadowlands theme? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to check out our live stream over at twitch.tv slash kalanitv. We're having a great time exploring the alpha and testing all sorts of stuff, so pop by and say hi sometime. You might even get a glimpse of the two cats. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and our subscribers on Twitch. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.